Yeah, that's probably, yeah, I should have said that. <laughs> so, Ryan, listen, thanks for speaking to us today. Um, been a bit of a whirlwind 18 months for you, what with uh, training at Melwood, going to the US last year with the first team, the uh, international call up. Has it has been hard to keep focus or are you just going with the ride? I was just basically going with the ride, really. I haven't really took it all in, to be honest. Like, obviously, from coming from Belfast, from back home, it's just, it's really. It's been insane, really, I'm coming over here. Joe, from training probably once or twice a week, and back home coming to train five times a week, and training standard as well. It's it's brilliant. It's obviously just going to improve as a player. So I'm just I haven't really got, everything hasn't really hit home yet to know what how I've been doing. So I just need to keep going really and just focus on the football. So you don't really have time to stop and then no, think about it all. No, maybe in the summer I might think about my season gone so far, and then just obviously reflect on that, and then. Obviously not for too long, because then you're obviously looking for the season ahead. So because obviously you want, there's always something to push for. So we'll just reflect on next season as well. And it, obviously the highlight must have been obviously the international call up for the uh, squad. Yeah, obviously that was a good feeling as well, being because you're being trusted really to play first team football. So obviously it's a big compliment for you as well. So you know it's really nice to get that call up. Were you expecting it, or did you come out of the blue? No, I just came out of the blue. Really, it was just. Um, there was a few like under 21 fixtures and all, and they, uh, people were saying like I remember it was we come back from America and then we had a friendly against Huddersfield out in the front pitch and then I came back and then I just checked my phone and there was people saying congratulations and I was like what well, for I didn't really know what happened and then I went on to my Twitter and that's when I first seen it like I didn't get any text or anything about me getting called up I just checked Twitter and that was that was how it all happened. You think you're fairly active on Twitter? I mean I through the looking glass I, I was in front of the other side because obviously you know. People see the players on Twitter, and you know how hard is it for you sometimes? Where you know you've got a fine line, to, to yeah. you've got a tall fine line with representing the club one thing or the other. Yeah, to be fair, like we get told a lot to how to use it and stuff, but like I love it just for like obviously banter purposes as well. Like I love like so sort of making people bite all on Twitter when they say something stupid. Like if you say like. Like I was a few times I would say about Zaggy or something coming on for Juventus and then everyone would go, he's, he, he's with Tad or something, he plays for AC Milan and all this here, dude. like just the fun things like that. And then obviously then me and my housemate Chris Peterson, we have a good bit of banter, but then there's a fan line as well. You have to realise like when you know, you can be, ser be serious and when you can have a bit of a joke about it. So it's just that fan line really, you can make sure you just don't go over it. Yeah. Is, that, is that part of the education package that you kind of offer to the academy where they, you know, they drill you not just I don't know, holistic education, but like how to behave, things to look out for when you're out and about, you know, because obviously you, you, you must be aware that, you know, you're up, you're up there now, you, you recognise football and, you know, there are pitfalls there and people who maybe will be able to get you. Yeah, Clive Cook and Phil Roscoe, they do a lot of work with us on that and they're just based, they're helping us out because obviously you don't really want to get any bad media coverage or anything at this young age when you're trying to make it as a professional footballer and obviously you don't want any setbacks in that way so you want to come across good on Twitter obviously when people are like following you and looking at your tweets so that's really, that's a really important thing to do and like we get good education here in Liverpool to you know, use Twitter right so it's helpful as well because like you don't really want to be using it in a bad side and then people be think having opinions on you already before they know you so that's important. How, how imp you, you keep saying that the word important, I mean how, just how important is the support network you've got at the academy from, from, the, from the staff behind the scenes? Sorry, what is it? Sorry? The support, well, saying just how important are the, the support staff behind the scenes at the academy uh, your developments on and off the pitch? Yeah, it's brilliant because but see, obviously the foreigners come over, mm -hmm. obviously me only because I'm across the sea really, I can't really class myself as a foreigner but we're moving away from home, we're like moving away from our friends and like so this is basically football, it's our life over here and they basically, like, as your life's Liverpool Football Club and everything evolved around that is on Liverpool so they obviously help you out, sometimes you might get homesick or whatever, you can always come to talk to them if there's any issues or there's any problems like personal life or anything, they would help you with it so it's brilliant, like you obviously have your um, Clive Cook and Phil Roscoe, they're like the education and welfare so they would help you a lot in that aspect and then you can go to the manager Alex Inglethorpe and Rodolfo Burrell, Frank McPart and they'll help you in that as well so you always have someone to go to if things are do you know not really good like outside of football in this so how, how hard was it leaving? I mean how long have you been here now? This is my second season. Second season. How, how hard was it leaving on because you must have been what 15, 16 when you Yeah, team, 16 when I was left and I was like before back home in Ireland like we're all really you know like close family and stuff so moving up my brother was already over here so that sort of helped because he already made that move when he was younger so when I was a bit homesick and stuff, we'd go up and see him and obviously my parents were over quite a bit as well just to help me settle in. So, But it was hard obviously because 
so you're moving over and your friends were there and like if you had a girlfriend back home as well and they're all back home so it's obviously a bit hard you know, when you're first moving over but then when you start playing the football and all you just forget about it and you're when you like good results and all come in and then you just realize why you're here you want to be so playing in the first team so uh, i love it here now like i don't really i don't get homesick at all to be honest and it's a small world anyway with football just being about exactly Walking into town and all, there's so many people from back home like you see in their O'Neill's jackets and all this here and their Gaelic gear and all. So, yo, know, there's lo there's loads and there's people from even my community, my street and all that are over here for university. So you would meet up with them as well and see them. So it's just home from home really here. And just one last one for me. Uh, what does the next eighteen? You said the last eighteen months have been a whirlwind. What does the next eighteen months hold for Ryan Obviously, I would like I would love to be playing. Like obviously, make my debut for Liverpool as well, and be up at Melwood full time training. And like obviously, like when you're looking at Andre with them, Suso, Raheem, to them how they've done. Like obviously, you would love to do what they do as well. But so you just need to really work hard and stuff. Obviously, it mightn't come as quick because, but you just need to keep training hard and just see where it takes you. Whether it's a loan move or it's training here or it's playing first team for Liverpool, you just need to see really. Yeah, just thinking about your position when you think about making the move upwards, do you think you're being played in your favourite and best position at the moment at this level? And do you think that's going to get you into the first team any quicker than who's in your way, if you know what I mean? Yeah, well obviously when you're signing for Liverpool, you're signing for a massive club, so you're going to be getting a lot of competition anyway, so you expected that really, so you just have to trust in your really your own ability and things and just hope that you can make that step up as well. And obviously um, it's good to train the training I'm getting here, it's brilliant. and if, Thought I've come along really well over the next over the last eighteen months with this training, so I'm really happy in that aspect as well. But I just like I just need to keep working hard really and just hopefully that hopefully the step up can happen for me and just see where it see where it takes me. Yeah, do you think um do you think you'd be going with the, the first team on the on the overseas tours this, this summer? And because that must have been quite an experience last year being effectively part of the first team for the summer. Yeah, it was it was unbelievable really. Like it's had one of the best two weeks of my life being away with them and obviously it was the same with like obviously because you you grew up watching Jamie Carragher on T V you know when you then when you really after like you, when you played the match alongside Jamie Carragher and all you didn't really realise until after when you reflected on it and you're just thinking that you watched these players on T V a year and a half ago like and you look like you look up to them and they're playing alongside you and it's insane. But like obviously we'll just see hopefully Obviously, we don't know if we're all going to be going on the pre-season tour this year, but just see what happens. But hopefully, we do. Like a few of us do get asked to go up and be unbelievable experience again. Do you think that the academy prepares you well for being in a position to mix with the first team? You know, the preparations are they all quite similar? Yeah, the the philosophy really is just completely through the whole. Like obviously, Brent Rogers brought Alex Inglethorpe in as well, and they have the same philosophy. The way they play, the first team play, the reserves play, even just down to under nines and. That's, it helps us a lot because we're playing that system all the time, so we're used to it now and we're training the way that first team trains. So if there's anyone, if we need to go up with the first team, they can just slot in really, and you know, because we know their style of play and what the manager wants of us. Yeah. Okay. Cheers, Can we just?